So we have here with us today uh, two artists who um, currently publish their work predominantly through the Brussels-based publisher uh, Framoc, and I'm very delighted that they're here. And uh, Framoc is based in Brussels, but the artists uh, are from all over Europe. Some are French, uh, some are uh, Belgian, and, and the publisher, of course, also publishes work by uh, Flemish artists, Italian artists, German artists, uh, and others. So uh, we have uh, Ivan Alagbe, who's here from France, and Dominique Goblet, who's here from Belgium. Uh, please join me in welcoming them. Um, we've been very lucky to have a few people uh, who work with this publisher in the U.S. over the last uh, couple of years. Um, we, we had Frédéric Cochet uh, in, in New York a few months ago. Eric Lambay has been here, Thierry Van Hachel. So we've heard a little bit about the story of the, this publisher, but I feel like every time someone comes, it's also an opportunity to learn more pieces of the story because it's a very complicated story. Um, but one of, the, one of the places we hear a lot about uh, uh, in terms of the, Bru the Belgian side uh, of Fremont is the school of uh, the Saint-Luc uh, in, in Brussels. Um, and uh, I know that uh, Eric Lambe and, and Thierry Van Hachel teach there now, and Thierry was a, a student at this school. And Dominique, were you also a student at yes. the school? Were you there at the same time as Thierry? Uh, at the same time, but he was in uh, comics and I was in illustration. Okay, so at that time the school already had a comics program? Yes. Uh -huh. Was there a big distinction, a big difference between the students who were in illustration or comics or fine arts? At that time, yes. Uh, uh, and uh, in my uh, courses, uh, it was really boring because uh, it, was, <laughs> it was illustration, but uh, really uh, the field of uh, children illustration. And I was uh, already very interested to produce some kind of very violent and bloody drawings and so on. And my teacher was were totally <laughs> in shock. Uh, I didn't succeed very well, <laughs> to be honest. I, I just finished uh, like that. <laughs> but it was funny because the year after I produced uh, my first uh, book with Fremok, and I heard that uh, they showed this uh, book uh, to the student and said, if you want to be uh, like Dominique Goblet, uh, which, uh, which was uh, our student, uh, and we loved her very much. <laughs> it was a little bit ironic for me. <laughs> very funny, pleasant. And um, it, it seems that while the, um, people were students at the school, they were already starting to do like fanzine or auto edition and things Wait. like this. Yeah, that's why, uh, in fact, uh, the, the the part of comic was already, I think, a little bit more uh, interesting. Because uh, before uh, it had already some groups uh, formed, and uh, they they already had as an idea to produce, uh, make auto production uh, with uh, oui, voilà. uh, by uh, scratching, uh, etching, voilà. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's the same, in fact. <laughs> and uh, also because uh, before us, uh, the, there was a group uh, called the Mocha, and also some uh, uh, kind of important movement in the, the 80s with a group uh, called uh, Le Neuvième Rêve. And all of that. Uh, was our uh, field to grow up with the idea to make comics, but comics more open with uh, art uh, idea. Uh, the, the idea we had immediately is to put comics in question with all limit possible. I don't know if you understand me. Yeah, it seems like there was a very fertile scene in Belgium particularly where there was this six, from what I've been able to understand, um, within a few years there were a number of um, anthologies that appeared. For example, this Mocha that you mentioned, I think this was co-founded by Eric Lambe and uh, Alain uh, Corbel. Voilà. Oui, and, um, and then they went on to produce uh, Pendure Mer, which ran voilà. for 
for several issues. And then there was also, I think, a kind of Flemish equivalent, right? Yeah. Is this in Flanders, maybe, yeah. this bill yeah. anthology? I don't know too much about this one, to be honest with you. I've seen one or two issues, uh, but I don't, I don't know the story of this. Three this, issues. Only three issues. Um, and then, of course, the other one that Thierry at the saint Luc was involved with uh, was this one. Um, do you were you do you remember when they began this anthology? It was uh, 1991. Uh huh. And what was the concept, or who were the people who were involved with this? Uh, we we wanted to make disappear the border between illustration and comics, but uh, the the point of common was to try to put everything in question. The codes must be questioned. Question, question. That was the most important. But also, uh, at the same time, we wanted to think about narration about wars and uh, make connections with uh, exhibitions. So uh, we tried to, to, to open the field by uh, uh, pick up influences out Sorry. from the comics, out of comics, like uh, theater, uh, literature, uh, movies, I don't know, but try to not uh, take our influence with uh, comics. And it seems like there was, a, there was a spirit of collaboration at this time. I found this, um, I guess, was this an exposition catalog or was uh, this, this publication that has contributions from uh, people associated with Bill, with Pelour Mayor, and with Frigo. Uh, this was, I assume, a kind of a collective exposition? In fact, uh, the, the landscape, our comics landscape in Europe changed really after 90 because uh, with uh, our group, uh, Fremog, which was at that time called uh, Frigo, then Fréon and then Frémoc. Uh, but uh, the, it was something very important. Was It was the fact that um, we uh, create a kind of a little festival, uh, specially based on uh, experimental uh, comics, which didn't exist at that time uh, yet. And we wanted to invite all the little structure which are in a kind of opposition with mainstream. And this festival called uh, um, voilà, Autarcic Comics. And after that time, uh, it, it produced a kind of energy with all the, the little structure in Europe. And uh, that uh, make uh, the, the fact that we were all in connection uh, was the beginning of a, a good strike and to, to, to strike against the, the power of mainstream. So at this time, when we're talking about something like the Tars or Tars Sick Comics Festival that you're just referring to, this was like a series of events and it included, um, as you said, you know, for the, the history of this includes the Frigo Review, which then became Frigo Box, and then started publishing books as Crayon, right? And it also involved um, it also involved Ivan's work. And so w this work that we've been talking about up till this point is all happening in Belgium, principally centered around Brussels. Now, Ivan, your story is a little different. Now, you didn't even you didn't study art in school, well, right? I studied stat science, uh -huh. uh, mathematics, and physics, uh -huh. and um, I started I started publishing with Olivier Marbeuf. He was studying uh, physics and biology at that time, mm -hmm. and we met at the university, and we started to make some uh, uh, things together, a little fanzine, and, uh, and then we started to make comics together. Mm -hmm. And we felt like uh, comics was a very interesting um, point to, uh, a very interesting field to explore, because you can be in touch with with text and, and, and picture, and there was a lot to do at that time uh, in comics because we discovered that the, the artists we loved most were, or they were, not, they were not published or they were not well published, and, um, and we found out that there was no publisher for the kind of comics we wanted to do. So, 
so we started to have this idea of making comics, um, publishing comics. And we were only two, so we were not a collective. We started to work with everybody. So that's how we met uh, Frigo, because uh, they made an exhibition in a little bookstore in Paris, which is which, which called uh, Regard Modern, which is a very important book, uh, bookstore in Paris. Uh, I mean, very important. Uh, it's very, very, very small, so it's very important for the books that are in there. Um, now it's, uh, I, I went there actually just a month or two ago and you have to be a contortionist. It's, it's very it's dangerous really to be there. <laughs> it's impossible to describe this store to someone who hasn't been there, but it's almost like the best bookstore you've ever seen compressed into the space of a storage unit and it's just piles of books everywhere and the only person who knows where everything is is the owner. But if you ask him, he'll find it and he'll give it to you. Anyway, um, so you, you, I know, um, you, how did you go from studying sciences to producing comics? What, were you, uh, have you been a reader of comics as a child and this was, was this something you did as a hobby? Yeah, I've, um, I've been re reading comics as a child. Uh -huh. um, I didn't start making, it was very difficult for me to do comics uh, as a child because you have to, I was um, trying, I would do a, the first uh, uh, one page or maybe two and then I would change my mind and begin something else so it's very difficult to keep something uh, long enough to, to, um, to make a whole story so as a child I didn't do comics but I was drawing and uh, but um, I didn't want to study art because I felt like uh, if I go to an art school everybody would be able to draw and I would be like uh, lost and, uh, and I'm, I'm good in drawing, so I prefer to do some serious study, and uh, that's, that's how I study mathematics and physics, because in France it's the, the best study you can do, so I wanted, <laughs> I was able to do it, so I, um, I did it, but um, then um, when I was in university, um, I still had in my mind that I wanted to do comics, around, so maybe on seven, when I was 17 years old, I started to do okay, now I should try to do something serious. That, so that, at that time, I um, realized my first complete comics and sent it to publisher. And um, so some of the publisher answered back and, and, uh, and so I um, started thinking that maybe I can be able to do some comics, but uh, I did it while I was studying, just like, it was like my, uh, uh, how do you say that? My jardin secret. Okay, your uh, secret yeah. garden. Yeah, yeah secret yeah, garden. Your hobby, yeah, mm. your private. Now you did, I, I was looking up your work online and you did a work that I haven't seen uh, with Olivier Marbouf, who you co-founded this fanzine with. Um, you did, had done a more kind of, relative to the work that you ended up doing, you did a more kind of, I guess more mainstream or classical kind of bande wow. I don't know how you would describe this. I'm not familiar with this book, so I can't really <laughs> describe it well myself. But I'd never seen uh, this work of yours. I I assume this was something you were very young when you made this. But was this an I attempt? Think I was to, Twenty. Was this an attempt to have a career? To be have a career as no, a comic artist? No, not, not at all. Not at all. Uh -huh. Actually, this book is not that mainstream. Uh, oh, okay. Maybe these pages is maybe the more. Uh, um, um, Attractive. <laughs> <laughs> the less or the more? I think it's the, maybe the more, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, it was kind of experimental, not in the visual. Uh, um, oh. uh, I don't know, I mean, I, I, we didn't intend to be to be mainstream, not okay. at all. I mean, okay. uh, and if you read it, it's a kind of surrealistic story mm -hmm. and, and um, uh, I don't know. Maybe some, some, most of the people that know this book and uh, and uh, <laughs> when they mention it, I mean, they're always like a little bit smiling, like just it's a kind of joke. And I don't know. I mean, I still, um, I still, I don't, I don't love this book, but I still feel like okay, I still know yeah. what we were trying to do. Yes, so of I'd course, of course. So for me, it's not that 
funny, but for most of people that know my work after that, mm -hmm. it's something they mention just to 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 make a joke at me. <laughs> oh, no, well, but was, it seems so like it's, it's not very kind to you to. to <laughs> well, no, I'm not making a joke. I'm just curious because I've never seen this book. No, and what, what is so? What but is this this okay, next next this um, <laughs> change. No, it it Sorry. wasn't interesting because this publisher of West at yeah. that time it would quite a small publisher, but it was mainstream uh -huh. publisher. But it was one of the publisher I, I contact when I was really yeah. young. And I sent some drawings, and then I kept in touch with the uh, editor. And uh, and then after after meeting Olivier uh, at uh, university, we started. He, he was writing, and uh, so he proposed yeah. me to work together. Uh -huh. And and then after we submit this, this work, uh, and uh, they accepted the editor uh, accepted to, to 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 do it, so it was really nice. Mm -hmm. But we realized that uh, the editor was nice and he liked our, our work. But then we realized that the publishing house uh, how to say that um, the publishing house will be um, interested in selling a lot more um, if it's he he uh, the, the publishing house sorry. The publishing house has two or three bestsellers. Yes. Like they would something that will sell, uh, let, let's say, a uh, hundred thousand copy, and they will work very tough to sell maybe two uh, hundred thousand copies. But a book like this, when they say, okay, this one will maybe will sell one thousand or two thousand, and they are not interested, and so they won't they won't do the job uh, to maybe sell 2,000 instead of 1,000, or maybe three instead of one or two. And uh, so they just give up that yes, thing. So course. we realize that uh, the point is not only to be published, but uh, the point is to be published well, mm -hmm. uh, and also to be, uh, um, uh, to be defended, def uh, defend. defend it, to, mm -hmm. be, to yeah. be supported. 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 Yeah. Sure. Well, and there's a big leap, I feel, um, in terms of, no, that was, that was well, well said. <laughs> and um, I think so people uh, always and, need and, to keep and, that And in when mind. we were working at that, at that uh, uh, in this publishing house, we realized that uh, the artist that we love most was more or less in the same case, that the, the didn't, didn't support really the work. That, mm -hmm. That's how we started to think about making our own uh, publishing house. Mm -hmm. So I kinda, we kind of made something um, the the reverse uh, way of many others that will start like in uh, making step. fanzine and then going to a bigger publishing house. Uh, I began my first book was in, in a quite big publishing house, but then after I, <laughs> I choose to go back to to uh, um, small uh, small press or. Yeah. Uh, uh, self-publishing. Yeah, yeah. But so you went, yeah. it's a big step going from working with a publisher to you and, and the same person who wrote that album, self-publishing this uh, journal, this anthology. And we can see, I don't know how clear it is on the slide, but this covers many different art forms. There's, you know, Bandazine, but there's also literature and, and uh, plastic arts and music and performance and things like that. So it really speaks to a desire to bring together different forms of art under one umbrella. Yeah. Um, and this, you originally called it dis your company Dissidents Artwork. Yeah. Uh, and then Amok was the publishing imprint of Dissidents Artwork, right? Exactly. And the, the flagship publication of Amok was your uh, the anthology, Le Cheval Sans Tête, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we can even see here how international this is because we have you know, uh, Thierry Van Hachelt, who we were just talking about, who was in Brussels and, uh, you know, and, and as well, you know, so you've got uh, Belgian artists and, and French artists and so on all together. Um, and there was one series of, of this anthology followed by a second one that was a little more, um, had higher production values, I think. Mm -hmm. um, can you describe um, what you thought was the um, attitude or function of this anthology at the time that you were working on it? Uh, well, at the beginning, when we started Le Cheval Sans Tête, um, it was on our only. Um, uh, it, we began uh, publishing the little story uh, of uh, a lot of people, like, and then after when we started making books uh, of uh, various artists, 
we thought that the ontology should turn into something else, not, or not only put some uh, short story together, but making something uh, uh, a real project. So we choose to, at the beginning it was, um, we publish it every three months. And this second, uh, second. Series. Hmm? Series or yeah, volume? This second series uh, mm -hmm. uh, was published on each, every six months to two um, issue uh, a year. And, and uh, in each anthology you have, you still have uh, uh, a little part with short story that we uh, bring together, just to be able to show what was happening around. Uh, and then the mo most the most part was uh, stories that was made for this anthology. So we choose a team uh, uh, that the people will work on. The first one uh, was uh, uh, we we asked three of. Um, Actually, it was uh, Olivier, uh, Sylvain, Victor, and I. So we were three artists to work on a, a theater play. And we wanted to show that uh, on the same text, using the same text, you can have a very different uh, adaptation. Yeah, and very different uh, vision of the same, same text. Just like, yeah, just like a theater uh, di director will make his own version of, of a theater play. So here we, we were both, no, we were three working on the same text, on the, the red one, the red mm -hmm. issue. And uh, the second one was on the um, team of the city of Marseille in, mm -hmm. in French, which is a, uh, yeah, a very rich uh, city. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that you were, of course, um, you know, you're not just an editor, you're uh, also an artist. Um, and you were serializing your own uh, work in this anthology. I think this is a page um, from, from an early version, version yeah. of Nerejon. And then you also, um, through Amok, the publishing imprint, in addition to publishing the anthology, uh, you were publishing small books by artists. Yeah. So, so um, this, this was published. That's uh, when we started. Uh, we choose. We started the second series of the anthology Le Cheval Sans Tête. Okay. When we begin to publish book like this. Okay. And uh, my understanding is that you um, redrew uh, this story yeah. for the publication. Mm -hmm. um, how would you describe the development of your drawing uh, up to this point? Well, as you have you have seen, there's nothing between uh, the other. Um, the books to show, uh, Ville Prostituée, the, the <laughs> books, <you know>. yeah. <laughs> this famous book. Yeah, we saw uh, it, yeah. <laughs> um, so um, when I started this this project, uh, Negro Jaune, I kind of wanted to make something more simple. Uh, I was, um, I, uh, tr I chose to work with a brush. Mm -hmm. and actually, I, I, it took time to, to find out uh, how to draw it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so you can see if you take the, uh, the issue of the anthology that it changed very much um, on, um, on the process of, of it. So, but even before that pages, there was something completely, mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. the, the first pages of, of Negro Jaune are really ugly. That's maybe the ugliest pages I've made <laughs> in my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I was trying to find something and uh, I'd, uh, I wasn't drawing that way before the, this project. And, uh, and so I, I, it took me a lot of time to, 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 to find my way, I to, to, to find the, the good brush, the good paper. The paper was very important. Uh, well, it's interesting to me too that you spent so much time figuring out uh, how to tell this story correctly because it seems like you had a lot of commitment to this story. Like many artists, for example, if they make a book and they're not satisfied with the art, they try to change the art then on the next book. Yeah. But you kept, you, it seems like you were very focused on telling this story correctly. It, yeah. Can you talk about why this was such an important work for you and for the people who don't know about it, maybe just describe very briefly the theme uh, of this work? Well, <laughs> I mean, I know it's a huge theme. But it I, I, actually, it's, it, I began this story. I didn't know it would stick on me like so, so such you're a still long time. Sort of working because working with this subject, you're yeah, still today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So it, it the the, um, the starting point is just something that happened uh, around me uh, as uh, one day at uh, I was at that time I was living at my at my father's place. My, my father wasn't there actually, but it's where well, um, I was living in. Uh, so my, my stepmother place, mm -hmm. and uh, actually she didn't have any paper. Uh, uh, she was illegal in in France, and there's other people who was illegal. Uh, mm -hmm. I knew the people, and one day uh, a character come and and, uh, and um, one day they met some someone that started to say to them that he, he can find some paper for 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 them because he, he knows some people and so on. And uh, of course, it was not true. But uh, I'll, um, something catch my, inten uh, my attention to that because the, 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 this man that was promising paper, he was kind of uh, something someone really lost, and and uh, he was trying to gain the affection, the uh, love from th those people, but. And uh, the other didn't know. He, he, they found them, this man was a little bit strange, but still they were kind of interested to see maybe it's, uh, maybe it's possible to get paper. So it was a kind of strange relationship. And I started to say, OK, that's, maybe I can do a short story about that. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. So I started to work on it. And, uh, and then I realized, OK, it can be a longer story. So. Uh, so I uh, serialized it in, in, in uh, Le Cheval Sans Tête. And the Cheval Sans Tête was coming out every three months, so it was a good way to, to work. Like uh, you, 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 you have to do your pages, and, mm -hmm. and so it helps to do something. And, uh, and um, well, I'm, actually, I realized that I'm not. Uh, Maybe I'm not the, the kind of uh, comics artist that has plenty story to tell, and you, you'd say, okay, next one, next one, next one. I always feel like uh, f the form of the story is very important. So for me, it's not, um, the drawing is not uh, something to, to present a story. The drawing is part of the story itself. If you draw the, the same story another way, it's another story. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm interested in, in, in drawing. Uh, that's why if the drawing are, is, are not good, or uh, I will redraw it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, um, and yeah, it's also something similar to, to, to a music player that okay, you, you can play uh, the same tune a thousand times and find different uh, way, different tone in the, in the, the same tune. And uh, so. Uh, well, it's like your project <laughs> with the theatrical adaptations that you were yeah. talking about, yeah. except you're incorporating it all within yourself and yeah. telling the same story from different dimensions. Um, uh, Dominique, th so this is, this is the first, um, I think your first uh, solo book with Amok, the first book uh, as yeah. a sole author with Amok. And Dominique, your first book with um, Freyon, uh, which was happening in, in Belgium while Yvonne was in France, is this. Uh, and I found a couple of pages from this one online. Um, I've never actually seen this book physically, um, but can you describe a little bit what this project was? It was... Uh the mix of all the direction I took, mm -hmm. which means uh, part of my sketchbooks, uh, some short stories, uh, uh, illustrations, but also uh, some painting. We can say kind of catalog, not really, but mm -hmm. things like that. It was, in fact, it was like a little bit like a, a sketchbook, mm -hmm. but printing. Mm -hmm. Um, do you consider this to have been a, a, a comics project, or is this more like an art book? Uh, collecting? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Really, I don't know. It's, it's only uh, all the tendency I took, all mm -hmm. the way I wanted to express. And mm -hmm. it was possible to put everything together because uh, we are not obliged to make only one thing with one style. Mm -hmm. I really love to be... Um, 
a lot of person mm -hmm. in myself mm -hmm. and I have a different style and each new project is made with an another uh, technique, another style, mm -hmm. another um, travel, mm -hmm. another travel because mm -hmm. I don't understand the, the, the people who can uh, draw uh, the same character for all, all the life <laughs> with the same technique and pff, it, it, it's so boring for me, but mm -hmm. okay, for them not, it's possible, huh? but mm -hmm. to me it's the death, mm -hmm. I don't know, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. um. And, and one of the things that I think both Freon and Amok were doing in a way uh, was organizing projects. Like you talked about how you had artists doing stories on the theme of Marseille for uh, Cheval Sans Tête. And similarly, um, in, I, my understanding is that Freon had this series of, um, uh, of books that were supposed to be about a place. I don't know if it was specifically Brussels. Um, the city in general. Uh -huh. But it was made for um, Brussels 2000, which uh, helps kind of cultural events and uh, and so it was a special project to, uh, uh, about the city so uh -huh. uh, um, artists would, would come uh, in residence and make a, a story about city so it can be about Brussels but right. it, it was in around the city in general uh -huh. so on the theme of the city so Dominique you did you did this book that was nominally part of this series I heard that you were a resident but you didn't do most of the work necessarily as part of the residency um, but um, can you can you describe uh, this book a little bit? Uh, this is not the same. Huh? Oh no! <laughs> no. Oh, this is the wrong, this is the from that. No, book. No. no, 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 no. Oh no! I said, took the wrong pages. So uh, it was a, a command. Uh -huh. you an order. Uh, command. Okay, thank you. Uh, just to make something about Brussels, and uh, a, a few few time before my dad. Uh, died and uh, I wanted to to make something about the cemetery where he was uh, uh, out of balloons we can make only one or two images per page we don't we are not uh, obliged to follow mm -hmm. all the rules mm -hmm. but we can play with them mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. and um, and all, ex sorry, oh, sorry go ahead. one one thing which is really interesting as uh, Yvan said, uh, is the fact that comics, in fact, uh, um, uh, contrairement, uh, comment on dit encore? contrairement à l'art, um, in opposition with uh, uh, art, painting, painting really uh, had a movement with a, a, a lot of uh, experimentations, but comics stayed a long, long, long time without this uh, experiment. And when we, we started with this, everything was possible because it was not made, not yet made, mm -hmm. so. And it seemed like that was a common idea with all of the publishers that were involved with voilà, these autarsic uh, comics festivals. My understanding is that it was Freon, it was Amok, it was also L'Association was involved with some of these things. La Sankiam Kush, um, I think, was involved with some of these uh, events, maybe the late ones, I'm not sure. Um, uh, Ego Comics, Bill. Yeah. Uh, there was Trapazine and Boxer in, in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. um, Cornelius. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, many others. Some, some, don't, some don't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. Le Dernier Cri. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Chacal mm -hmm. Puyon, that was the publisher of um, the pu publishing house of uh, Stéphane Blanquet. Ah, okay. So there was a lot of things uh, mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, um, just to mention it, but at the same time, that was the beginning of the collaboration between Freon and Amok, mm -hmm. is when we started to make our own event in, uh, in Paris. So uh, Tarsi Comics was uh, an, an annual festival in, in uh, in Brussels, but in Paris we made uh, what we call a café littéraire. The it was every every month mm -hmm. we'll rent a place and make an exhibition, and the exhibition will last only one evening, one day. So just like you just do the opening of the exhibition and then you, you <laughs> take it off. But uh, and we made some table and present the, the books. And it was very important at that time because 
it was kind of difficult to distribute the books. So that means that a lot of uh, bookstores won't accept to have that kind of comics. And uh, so every month, um, we, it was a way to provide a place to find those comics mm -hmm. and to see it on the wall and, uh, and to buy the, 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 the books, to see the books and to, to buy the books. And it was also a way to m make all the, the people that was involved in, in that kind of comics, they, they can meet. A lot of people met right. there, actually, uh, in, 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 in Autarcy Comics, mm -hmm. because they were the people so from L'Association came here, the people from uh, uh, Ego Comics, the people from uh, Fréon, Frigo, et cetera. We, we invited some uh, Portuguese and so on. Uh, each, uh, each event had as, uh, as, uh, his own uh, team and, and um, and uh, and then the people met and they were able to do other projects together and that that kind of thing. So it, we made this maybe something like two months, uh, two months, two years. Every month we will do we will be doing this, and we choose the same name, mm -hmm. Otarsi Comics. So it kind of create a, a, like a connection between uh, between Freon and Amok, mm -hmm. and uh, that's more or less how we started to work together very closely. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and, and as you say, there was this collaboration between Freon and Amok, and that, of course, explains the name Freon in, in 2002. These two publishers came together. There was a kind of um, announcement mm -hmm. uh, on this is the old uh, Freon yeah. uh, website, uh, and all this kind of mythology of, of uh, the dance of Freon and this symbol. I don't, why did you choose the pineapple as a symbol? Well, <laughs> um, it happens like just like this. I think we um, at the beginning, before we put it in in a, ser a serious way, uh, it was just a joke. Mm -hmm. Like uh, actually, it it uh, it began with um, with a book uh, with a project of a book of Vincent Fortin, mm -hmm. which was part of Freon. And uh, uh, Olivier and I, as Amok, proposed to uh, uh, Vincent to make a book with us, and he accepted. And uh, and it brings some kind of jealousy with the other that why are you doing a book with them? You can do the book with us, and so because he was part of the the of uh, the other publishing house, so it was not. Uh, the other people of Freon was not ang were not angry, but still they kind of uh, and someone started to say, okay, you can do a, a book at Freoc <laughs> or Fremoc, and uh, and then a little bit later at the festival we started to joke with this idea of Fremoc. So at the beginning it was just like uh, the people that when we were all together we. We were the framework, and we still had those the, the separate publishing house. And then, at what point, we, we decided to 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 really do something serious about this. Mm -hmm. But uh, the pineapple is just like I think we were drinking a little bit at that time, so it was just something to mix the drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and one and of the things that we'll, I I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. And that was this, this thing to, to, to turn when you have a cocktail, you can wow. turn your, your ice in, on, your, on your drink. And also we were playing uh, with some, some uh, um, leaves. Uh -huh. uh, there was a plant at that time. I mean, uh, we were just drinking. And, yeah. and <laughs> that usually is the answer to those <laughs> difficult questions. Um, and one of the things that I like is that there's this kind of humorous theorization, you know, that the, the signing by Editions Amok and Freon of the Treaty of Fremok uh, gave birth to a giant of graphic literature, which already possesses nearly 85% market share of the comics of pure creation, according to the latest available statistics, you know. Was it important? Did it feel important at that time to pronounce, make these kinds of manifestos and pronouncements and things like yeah, that? Yeah, it's, it's was, uh, you, you know, we, what we were doing was, uh, our art was seen as something very serious and very arty and kind of boring and uh, and actually we are not we don't feel that way and we are not uh, we don't uh, we are not like this but we <laughs> and, and so when we started with this it was also a way to yeah not 
trying to be funny, but uh, um, it, it was it was a joke. But um, it was also the the moment at uh, at that time we had already something like ten years publishing mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. with Fre Fre uh, Freon and, and and Amok. So at that time it was um, the moment when uh, some big publisher was started to to do voilà. uh, kind of the same thing uh, trying trying to to look like uh, what was called independent independent comics so the dependent pu publisher was <laughs> also trying to 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 and um and um we felt like we we were not doing the same thing that the other and we started to 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 so it was uh, um, a way to, to, to say that uh, maybe if you take Freon and Amok, you, you, you got most, the most interesting part of what you can find in comics. <laughs> yeah. Well, and since then, you've both published a lot. Unfortunately, we don't have time to talk about all of the books that you've done since then, but I want to make sure we talk about your more recent books. Um, so you've done uh, a collaboration with an artist named Olivier Bromanti. There's a newer edition of Nerojon that collects the original with some other stories. But your most recent book that we have here, or the most recently published, uh, Ecole de la Misère, uh, is, is uh, in some ways very different uh, from the other work that we've seen here, um, but is also related. Can you talk about the connection between this and Nerejan, the story that you've uh, been working on for so long? Um, um, at that time, uh, I was, um, I think I was reading some um, writer like uh, Faulkner and others mm -hmm. that, um, and I was interested in um, creating a kind of uh, word like you can read books, you can read it separately, but if you read all the books, it kind of creates a word in itself. And uh, and also I like this idea of making maybe a story in the point of view of one character and then telling the same story on the point of view on another one. And, um, and it's also because uh, when you telling um, a story and when you're dealing with some character, they kind of uh, they kind of start to they start to being alive. So they you want you you kind of live with them and 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 so you continue with them and you you so so then and then after Negro Jaune, uh, uh, it was um, natural for me to 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 go on with that and to to to. Not only um, um, it's not only a, a matter of telling the the, um, the rest of the story or to continue it. It can be going back. Mm -hmm. it's, but basically, it's the idea that it's a real world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you, you kind of try to do s something with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and in in this one this uh, book, uh, Ecole de la Misère, I wanted to 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 tell the story, but I didn't want to, to um, I wanted to tell a story that can skip on time, like uh, uh, do some flashback and then go back to, to, to the past, but without showing it. Not uh, So you, you don't have any cloudy frame to say, okay, we are in the past, and oh, the, the character is dreaming. All is mixed, everything is uh, drawn the same way. It could. It can be someone that imagines something. It can be a photograph. It can be a, a, a memory. It can be. But everything is on the same level, mm -hmm. and it's just. Um, I was kind of interested in the writer that uh, used what was called like this flow of consciousness mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So I tried to to I tried to to do something uh, in comics with this idea. Uh, and Dominique, you've produced several books. Not all of them have been with Remok. You did a very um, uh, well-regarded uh, autobiographical book with L'Association. And as you mentioned before, you know you like to draw in different drawing styles, and that's something that we certainly see in this book. Um, and you've produced many other books, like uh, some some that uh, you have actually here upstairs with Remok, uh, Les Hommes Loupes. 
that we see here, um, this kind of artful meditation on masculinity, <laughs> I guess, um, uh, that uh, has these very um, striking images. Um, but your most recent book is, um, uh, I guess, Plus si en temps, is that mm -hmm. how you say it? And this is, um, this is a collaboration with a German cartoonist named Kai Pfeiffer. And this project has some very interesting qualities. Um, I found this announcement on the internet where you say, you know, drawn and written by Domenico Blé and Kai Pfeiffer, uh, we will draw 150 pages or more, and the book will be 150 pages or less. Um, <laughs> and uh, um, it's, it's difficult to describe how this book came about, but it's a collaborative book and most of the individual pages were drawn either by you or Kai, but they're, my understanding is that they're, this is a page by Kai from early in the book. We don't say that. Oh, you don't say that. <laughs> no, every, no ev everybody knows already about the first page. Okay. <laughs> no, it's a joke. It's okay. a joke. But it's true that we, we decided to not to, to say who made uh -huh. the what. Yeah, I notice every page has both initials on it. And some pages wa were made uh, by two, uh -huh. uh, but uh, the, the concept of this book was uh, to work uh, basic, basically not on a story, like we make uh, generally in comics, we write a story, then we have the storyboard, uh, the cutting, and uh, the sketch, and then uh, the pages. We we decided to, to try to uh, inverse the process and uh, working on a, a thematic, which was uh, love on uh, love internet uh, website mm -hmm. and uh, love research. And uh, we just had to, to produce a page, but the, the rule was four panel by page. That was uh, the rule. And we send pages to each other on the thematic. And when we receive the drawing, we react or not on the drawing we receive. And the idea was when we would have 100 pages, we will cut all panels, mix all this uh, image material, and see if it's possible to create narration based on this uh, image material. Mm -hmm. But in fact, uh, because we react uh, on the page of each other, in fact, when we arrived at 100 pages, it was already a kind of skeletus of narration. And we just had to, to create uh, 50 more pages uh, to, to put into the holes and uh, make the narration very lisible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for instance, uh, this double page uh, uh, is uh, a good example because I will make uh, another mistake. I will say who <laughs> made this. <laughs> uh, OK, the one you see on the left, mm -hmm. left, gauche, mm -hmm. uh, is the first page uh, I produced. Uh, on a, uh, a residence we made together. So we draw together. So I draw this page, but I was really afraid to start drawing with him because it's very impressive to draw next to someone. I have the habit to draw alone. And bon, okay, I start it and I gave it to him and he react on my page and you can refine all the... the um, symbol, the second panel is the first one in his size, mm. then the foot, the policeman, and so on. I don't know if these are Wait, the sa in no. the same sequence. No, okay, I don't have sequential, sequential pages. But, but that was the, the, the plan is to react. So, yes. so sometimes we just make a kind of um, uh, dit encore des variation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, formal, sometimes about uh, the stories or elements and so on. S so that, in fact, when we arrived at 100 page, 
we had some character, a mother, 50 years old, uh, something, uh, some drama uh, happened to her and she was uh, like surrounded by emptiness and try to find men on it internet. And we could follow her fantasy uh, through the, the book and her fantasy was to invite all the group of men uh, at the same time, the same place, her, her house and her garden and uh, being like a, a dominant queen on all this group of men and ask them to work for her and <laughs> make sex uh, how she wants and so on. <laughs> so that's yeah. uh, the, the, the play. That's the display. Yeah. And, and the images recur throughout the book too. The reason I, the, the page that I have after this, one of the things that we see on the fourth panel on the left hand page is that that swimmer recurs from uh, you know, from at various points in the book, um, and this is a fascinating book too. Because even if you don't, um, if you even if you can't read the language, you can follow just the play of images and how you know in each two-page spread, uh, the images from one page are picked up on the other page, and how it creates these sort of visual uh, it, and narrative Yeah, in progressions. fact, it's also a kind of uh, a poetic. Uh, um, on the process, mm -hmm. a little bit like Burroughs uh, when he played with words and cut make up. collage, uh, mm -hmm. cut, cut up, up and mm -hmm. so on. Uh, it's a kind of thing like that, but it's a real narration. You can also follow it. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we, I think there's a lot more we could talk about, but unfortunately, we're out of time. Uh, so I would just like to um, ask everyone to join me in thanking Dominique and Yvonne for being here today. Mm -hmm.